Hello, hello. So I was planning on doing this live today, but for some reason the live in the group function isn't is playing up. So I've decided to jump on and do a video instead. So last month I put a post in and said, was there any topics that people wanted me to come in in May and talk about? And there was about five or six different things that have been put were put into the group. So this is like the first of a sequence of lives that I'm going to do throughout May. And today's topic, um, a sensitive topic, and so I just want to make a bit of a caveat at the start that if anyone's watching this and this brings anything up for you, please keep yourself safe as you watch this video and anything and sort of take time to talk to somebody. My door is open if you want to reach out and talk to me if anything gets triggered or brought up for you as a result of what I'm going to be talking about. Um, it wouldn't be appropriate of me to talk about the topic of sexual abuse at any deep level in this open forum. So I am going to touch on it quite lightly and focus more on the specifics that Ashley's asked around the link to um, food, but also keeping ourselves unattractive in our lives if we've been the um, if we've been survivors of, of sexual abuse. So. Just reading out Ashley's question, so I've got it up there on the board. So sexual trauma attached to overeating or overeating attached to wanting to hide your beauty. You know, it's, I've, over the years, I've been a therapist now for, this is my 19th year of being a therapist. It's probably only been the last 10 or 12 years or so where I've really started to grow my one-to-one -one practice and ha have actually worked with a number of women who have experienced sexual abuse um, in childhood but also later in life. And, you know, all of those come presenting or holding on to extra weight. So there's definitely a link between um, abuse, sexual abuse specifically, um, and a link to holding on to a, a bit, living in a bigger body. So I just thought I'd spend a little bit of time just talking about the impact of sexual abuse whether that's been as a child or on us in later life, you know, it has a it has a huge impact, so certainly on a child. You know, children's brains are developing when they're very, very young. And so biologically, any kind of physical, mental or sexual abuse can actually change the developmental patterns within the actual development of the brain. I'm not going to talk too much about that today, but from a, from a belief perspective, you know, if you think about an innocent child having something like that done to them you know it has a fundamental impact on their sense of safety and their sense of security and also their ability to trust to trust in adults and trust in men or women whoever the perpetrator was so those three things are huge when you start to think about how does that then start to influence our belief system so we all experience some form of trauma as, as children or as adults and a lot of the time put with the uh, whole brain chemistry changes aside you know these experiences that we have in ch in childhood sculpt us they sculpt the way we see ourselves the way we see other people the, the way we see relationships the way we trust people you know so whenever we experience any levels of, of abuse especially sexual abuse it has a massive impact on the way we see ourselves. And the, the clients that I've worked with had similar patterns, certainly in terms of their lack of trust with people in their lives, their inabilities to have stable, loving relationships. Quite a few of them had also been quite provocative um, in their teen years and into their 20s, where they'd sort of been quite... Um, they view sex in ways that were actually quite unhealthy that reinforced the beliefs that they had about themselves so you know often yes it's it's the it part it, the trauma happens but the continued trauma is more about the uh, the beliefs that we've attached to that trauma the meaning that we've attached to that trauma in terms of who what that means about us what that means about other people because quite often when things like this are happening the perpetrator is often making threats is saying it's our secret 
that might even be making threats that they would do or do somewhat something hurt somebody if they tell anybody so there's whole this whole secrecy element that's attached to it as well so you know that whole experience can have such a powerful and damning um consequence on somebody's perception of themselves and perception of other people as they grow up into life so then when you start to think about how well, how does food come into that and how does body size come into that you know you'll often hear me talk about weight being an armor and so i think when it comes to like sexual abuse you know people fall into two camps they fall into like the emotional eating side of things where they're using food to help them cope with difficult situations in life often people who have experienced sexual abuse you know come with mental health challenges you know depression anxiety those kinds of things and so to continue to live through life becomes really challenging and food can become a part of that day-to-day -day way of coping but also you have people who overeat to maintain a bigger body and I often share my own experience of where my weight was exactly that. It was about maintaining a bigger body, so I was unattractive to men. Um, mine didn't come from a, a, a sexual abuse, um, or an experience of sexual abuse, but it definitely came from a, a, a shaming experience that I had when I was very, very young and how that then made me feel very conscious about my body and that then translated over the years into if I stay in a bigger body I don't have to have relationships and therefore I don't have to trust men specifically so it's such a powerful question um, Ashley um, because absolutely you know if you think about somebody doing that to us you know the subconscious mind's job is to keep us safe and to protect us and the way it will do that is to maintain a bigger body because our perception is if we're fatter not only do we have this armor this this protection layer of fat that protects our innermost vulnerable core there is also that belief and that perception that if we're fatter people will find us unattractive they won't find us sexually attractive and so therefore we're safe so you know isn't that sad you know and i i i have spent so much of my life being really harsh and critical of, of myself and actually since I've done a lot of inner child healing work and started to forgive myself uh, for the abuse I've put my body through and also to start to reconnect with that part of me that absolutely didn't deserve some of the things that have happened to me over the years in terms of how men have treated me in relationships and things like that so so I'm just having a little read of my notes around things I wanted to say so yeah, there's definitely these kind of people fall into two camps. The emotional eating to help them cope with challenges in life, challenges that have manifested as a result of what our experiences were in childhood, but also the other side, which is like that eating to maintain a bigger body. So when we start to look at healing, you know, the thing is we, none of us can change the things that have happened to us in the past. But what we can do is we can recognise the meaning that we've given to that and how that has then translated into how we see ourselves and how we relate to other people. You know, I know for me, I've had a big wall up that has meant I haven't let people in, not just um, romantic relationships, but all relationships have been very, very untrusting and very closed down. And that has stopped me from being able to experience the joy and um emotional connection that i could have had with people and it's only really been in the last six or eight years as i've started to heal truly and deeply heal my childhood wounds that i've been able to have much closer more connected people um, relationships with people without the fear that they're going to reject me or that they're going to hurt me in some way so we can't change what's happened but what we can do is we can stop the cycle we can start to interrupt those cycles that are actually keeping us stuck in a place of feeling like we need to maintain a bigger body to stay safe because what we have to remember what reinforces our beliefs is culture society the people that we have around us and so it might have been that it was through the abuse the sexual abuse that we experienced when we were younger that we made some decisions about ourselves that 
and one of those decisions was to stay in a bigger body but that is reinforced and we reinforce that need to protect ourselves by hanging out in society like diet culture is a perfect example isn't it where we continue to buy into the belief that we need to be protected because the world is cruel so there'll be some beliefs that we have going on that are reinforcing that perception that we need to stay in that bigger body but also it's the way we talk to ourselves so we are creating that unstable environment within ourselves by the way we talk to ourselves and so the subconscious is constantly keeping us in a place where we need to maintain this bigger body to stay safe if that makes sense so we need to stop the cycle and we stop the cycle by starting to interrupt the subconscious belief that it needs to protect us because the subconscious is literal it will keep going round and round those cycles until we tell it differently okay and some of the techniques that i use to help people heal is the inner child healing you know connecting with that that vulnerable part of us that experienced that sexual assault that when we were younger not in a way that we relive it or revisit it but in a way that we actually give that part of us a, a safe place to be able to share how that made her feel and to start to understand the beliefs that she made about herself and about others and to start what I call the process of reparenting to actually start to listen to that part of us and to actually educate and bring the beliefs up to date because although when we were eight nine or ten years old when maybe this abuse happened we are no longer that little girl we are we are grown-ups with our own minds and our own will and our own ability to make our own decisions and to do things differently but the subconscious doesn't know that unless we tell it so it will keep replaying those old protective patterns until we interrupt and inner child work is about creating a really powerful way of being able to interrupt those patterns and to start changing those beliefs a bit like the changes of the seasons it's not like an overnight thing but once you start to do once you start to tell yourself a different story and you start to take care of yourself in a different way it's like the changes of the seasons things start to just slowly change things that once would have triggered you might not trigger you quite as uh, as much some of the reasons you would have turned to food aren't there because you're not being triggered and you're actually maybe being kinder to yourself so you're not feeling quite so not enough if that makes sense so another key thing as well is also forgiveness forgiveness of that person forgiveness of yourself because i know i've really blamed myself for a lot of things that happened to me throughout my life you know had i've been slimmer had i've been a different person then those things may not have happened which of course is a load of rubbish you know it's like you know that's on them the way people have chosen to treat me over the year is on them and you know i can't take responsibility i can take responsibility for the part i played in that and letting that happen um but actually forgiveness is so powerful forgiveness of them so i don't carry that um that stuff around with me for life you know i've carried a lot of stuff around with me for a long time you know infidelity and in relationships that i've blamed myself for that i've carried around with me and i've learned to accept what is and to forgive acceptance is the next one it's such an important thing you know and we kind of have this we kind of feel like acceptance and forgiveness are like letting people off it's not it's about letting us off the hook it's about us letting go of all of that stuff that we've carried around with for years this big rock sack of of hurt and pain that actually manifests in like a weight protector and when we can start to let that rock sack off that's so so powerful and the last one on there was around reparenting and building trust building trust within ourselves and when we trust ourselves implicitly and what i mean by that is that we have we can stop worrying about what someone may or may not do to us and stop hiding in our lives because when we trust ourselves we know that we actually have got ourselves covered that we can go out into life and life happens you know like the storms of life you know that metaphor are, is going to happen and when you trust yourself you know that you will deal with whatever life throws at you so instead of worrying about what may or may not happen and then having to like be prepared for what may or may not happen we start to just live a bit more in the moment and we start to be more trusting that 
unfortunately people are going to let us down people are going to hurt us but we know that we have the skills to be able to navigate ourselves through that or we have the right people around us to help us navigate that as well so hopefully actually i didn't want to cover this on too deep a level hopefully this has just given you a little bit of sort of my high level thoughts about the impact that sexual abuse has on us in terms of our belief system and how our belief system um, links into our food relationship but also from that kind of protective layer that if we protect ourselves with a layer of fat that actually will repel people and therefore that's the ultimate safety isn't it but of course it doesn't work like that because actually we need connection we need that sense of um, connection with others we need a sense of love you know love and connection and um, being part of a tribe is so powerful but if we're constantly pushing that away our inner child just stays in that place of feeling like she's done something wrong like she's not enough so when we can go through the process of healing where we actually start to bring that inner child into our world where we start to understand how she's feeling and we start to meet her needs in other ways other than the need to eat or the need to maintain a bigger body when we start working on forgiveness and acceptance when we start to reparent ourselves in a way that is actually healthy and that includes things like putting boundaries in place discipline joy bringing more joy into our lives self-care all the things as parents we do for our children that seem to like get forgotten when we when we reach adulthood you know it's about going back to basics it's about going back to like what is the role of a parent because many of us didn't have our parents took care of us and this isn't about blaming our parents but the emotional stuff just wasn't there and so when we can start to reparent ourselves and build trust within ourselves that is really powerful and that's when we start healing we can't change the past but what we can make sure we do is stop the cycle we interrupt that the stuff that the past has kind of created in terms of protection within our subconscious and we can start to settle that part of us down that feels that it needs to protect us because actually that served us once those ways of protecting us served us once but it's not serving us anymore so hopefully that's been helpful